As everyone is aware, there is absolutely no doubt that the contamination of sports supplements represents a very real risk to both elite and professional athletes. The answer clearly lies in risk management programs combined with laboratory testing. We started testing for supplements in 2002. Since that time we've tested over 40,000 supplements for the presence of banned substances, working with a range of, of manufacturers drawn from countries all over the world. Manufacturers really, there's, there's no mandatory need for manufacturers to have testing done so they can set up and um, um, and produce supplements and provide those onto the market um, and there's no regulation around the type of testing that they need to have done. A number of very good manufacturers are out there but uh, there's also a number of less good manufacturers let's say people setting up um, very quickly, setting up with buying ingredients um, at, at low cost, um, manufacturing things in uh, facilities that don't have good cleaning processes. All of those areas can lead to inadvertent contamination. Well, the issue is that athletes really face a problem. Uh, supplements can be contaminated and you just cannot tell from the outside uh, if that's the case or not. I think athletes have a right to use supplements um, as anyone in society. Uh, supplements are a part of society. And there's also a fundamental issue here that we ask from athletes to perform to the best uh, of their abilities. Um, and there are certain supplements out there that help them in that regard. So. Um, yes, it is a problem that supplements can be contaminated and if you like sports you should try and do something about it. An issue with um, sports supplements, uh, a major issue for any athletes that are taking these supplements that, that run the risk basically of failing a drugs test through no fault of their own, through inadvertent contamination of the sports supplements that they're taking. There's always a concern. Um, it's something that we're aware of in our programme, the coaches are aware of. It's just a matter of minimising risk. When I'm competing I don't buy supplements abroad if I run out. Um, I'd rather do without my supplements than, than take the risk of buying something abroad and not being aware of, what, of what's in it. Back in 2007, 2008, we purchased a range of sports supplements from the US and the UK markets and tested those and found that between 10 and 25 percent of those supplements were in fact contaminated with banned substances that would have caused somebody potentially to fail a drugs test. The problem, the negative, is that the athletes themselves really need security because they don't know where to turn to when it comes to taking supplements. They are afraid that if they take a product that it contains a banned substance and that could have disastrous effects on their career. Because you know the industry has moved on. Um, we've repeated that work just recently uh, in 2013 and in fact the results are still the same. You know, we selected a range of popular brands from across uh, Europe, all, all available within Europe, and tested those again uh, and found around 10% of those uh, contain things that um, would have been considered banned under WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency. For the good manufacturers, uh, if they want to uh, ensure that their products are free from, from contamination uh, and so that they can give assurance to their elite athletes and, and other um, um, people that purchase their products, then they need to go to a laboratory that has the necessary expertise in order to do that. Uh, and that's a laboratory that has things like ISO 17025 accreditation for supplement testing. It's a specific um, ISO regulation uh, that governs um, uh, how sports supplements um, can be tested um, and so manufacturers need to look for that. They also need to look for a lab that has expertise in sports anti-doping because um, the, the testing that's done in order to get down to the levels that we're looking for for these um, contaminants is um, very, very low. You're looking at typically parts per billion, um, which is an order of magnitude less than, for example, where you're looking at uh, other, other types of contaminant that might be covered under good manufacturing practice. So uh, it's very important that people know uh, what they're getting when, when they go and ask for testing to be done by a, a, a testing lab.